What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the 2019 Mercedes-Benz AMG GT63. Huge shout out to Mercedes-Benz Northlake for providing this car for today's video. I'll have the link to their website down in the description below. Definitely check them out. They have a huge selection of all the Mercedes and a ton of the new GTs. And the model that we're looking at today is finished off in obsidian black metallic and has an MSRP of $154,000. Underneath the hood, this features a 4-liter bi-turbo 8-cylinder engine. It pumps out 577 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque. The engine is paired to the AMG Speed Shift 9-speed automatic transmission and sends the power to all four wheels through the 4-matic all-wheel drive system. And with a curb weight around 4,400 pounds, you can still get 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds. And running off a 17.4 gallon fuel tank, you can expect to get 15 miles per gallon in the city and 20 out on the highway. The overall length comes in at 199.2 inches with a wheelbase of 116.2 inches. The width is 81.5 and the height is 57 inches. The AMG GT four-door is a four-door version of the iconic two-door AMG GT sports car. This has a lot of sharp styling just like with the two-door car. The front end is extremely bold and aggressive. We have vertical slots within the grille finished off in chrome along with the Mercedes-Benz logo. Massive openings on each side of the front bumper to allow a ton of cooling to the radiators. There's a large opening in the center center of the front bumper with active flaps to allow even more cooling when necessary. Gloss black front splitter with chrome trim along the front end help give it an aggressive appearance. We have four parking sensors in the front of the bumper as well as a forward facing camera. More parking sensors are on the side of the front bumper. And then we get to the multi-beam LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. The front bumper flows nicely to the hood with some bulges in the center portion help giving this a muscular appearance to it. You can see the front fender arch is bulging out a little bit more to help give it a wide appearance up front. And then moving to the side profile of the car. This features a set of 20 inch wheels in all four corners wrapped in Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires. We have a ventilated drill and slotted rotors in all four corners as well with a six piston red brake caliper up front and a four piston brake caliper in the rear. The front fenders have the V8 Bi-Turbo 4 Matic badge along with the trim piece above that. We get chrome trim running around the windows as well as body colored side mirrors. The side mirrors also have LED turn signals on them as well as a camera beneath them. The door handles are two-tone with body colored and chrome accents to it and there's a very round body line making its way all the way on the side of the car. The overall side profile has that swooping rear end design to it. I have the active spoiler in the up position. Very nice styling all around. You can see the proportions to it. Making our way to the side of the car as well as the rear of the car, you can see a lot of rounded lines to it. The fenders in the rear bulge outward to give it a nice wide appearance from the rear. We get LED taillights back here as well as six more parking sensors. Quad exhaust system with chrome tips and an AMG badge on it. We had a gloss black lower diffuser with some fins on it as well. And then making our way back to the spoiler, you can get a great look how it looks in the up position. Very sleek rear end design with the flatter looking taillights. So there's a good look at some of the styling as well as some of the performance specifications with the GT63. What do you guys think of the overall design of this car? They practically took the two-door AMG GT sports car and then turned it into a four-door car. This still has a lot of the sports car styling to it. Very clean looking all around with very bold body lines. I love the side profile, how the rear end is swooping. And then making our way back to the front of the car, it's so mean looking. It really looks like it's going to attack you from this angle. Definitely love the bold appearance to it. And then to take a look at the interior, just hitting the unlock button on the key. The mirrors are fold down as well. We can get a really good look at the overall interior. The door panel is finished off in all black leather. It even goes all the way on the bottom portion of the door panel. A very nice touch to it. Beautiful leather, very soft to touch. Even has a lot of padding on the armrest. We get some silver stitching along it, and then silver accents on all the buttons. We have all of your window and mirror controls, your aluminum release handle, as well as the lock and unlock. A nice grab handle more stitching along it, and then we get some carbon fiber trim to it as well. More black leather and stitching on the top of it. We have all of your seating controls as well as the memory seating, heated and ventilated, and then the Burmester audio system. Beautiful door panel with a lot of nice features. We have the power release for the tailgate as well as a little bit of storage. And then making our way inside, we get the illuminated AMG badge along the door sill. Full black leather seating with solid leather on the side, a little bit of Alcantara trim to it, and then all perforated leather within the centers. We get more silver stitching throughout the seats as well as the AMG badge up top. And then making our way to the steering wheel, it's two-tone with perforated leather as well as solid leather, more silver accents, and a flat bottom design. And then now inside the car with my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and start it up.
taking a look at all the controls on the steering wheel now, over on the left side, we have a lot of your cruise control settings. We have a back button for the center screen, and this is a touch capacitive button. We can swipe over and go under different items within the center screen of the car. And then you can just click the button once to go into the actual screen. Over on the right side, we have more Bluetooth and audio controls. And then hitting the home button right here, the center screen will now come up. And just like with the other side, you can swipe over to go to different items within the center screen. We have more controls in the center of the car. Twisting this will change the different driving modes that the car is in. It'll come up on the dash. We have a Sport Plus mode. You can go down into Sport, Comfort, an Individual, and then a Slippery mode as well. It all comes up on the center screen too to show you every driving mode and what everything is set in. And then you do have the same button right here. You can just toggle this up and down and it'll go into different driving modes. On the left side, we have a traction control on off button and then your suspension button. You can toggle this between a sport mode, comfort, and then a sport plus mode. And then we have all of your headlight controls down here as well as an electronic parking brake. A lot of the safety features are located right here. Pressing this button will toggle if you need to use your hands on the steering wheel or not. You have the lane keeping assist, the parking sensor button. Tapping this button, the heads up display system will come up. You can see the speedometer and the tachometer, which is a really cool touch for it. And then making our way over here, we have more black leather and carbon fiber along the dash. The stitching runs throughout the entire dashboard, giving it a beautiful look to it. More of the silver stitching. You have two separate screens right here, one for the center gauge cluster that's all configurable, and then the infotainment screen over on the right side. To control the infotainment screen, you have a touchpad right here. Hitting the home button, we get the home screen up on the screen. And then just swiping my finger over, we can go to different settings. Going under the vehicle, we can change a lot of the parameters within the car. We have a seat control, you have all your climate controls, different driving modes, a track pack, a lot of settings within the car. And then if we go back up into climate, we can see all the different zones. You can sync them, you can change your climate mode. Into dynamic selection now, we can change a lot of the data within the car and read a lot of the information. It'll come up on the screen as well. Going back home now to take a look at the navigation screen, we can just swipe right over to it. We have a large map that pops up and then swiping over to the right, that'll make it to where you can enter your destination and go and do everything like that. And you can also pinch to zoom, which is a great feature. To take a look at the backup camera, we'll go ahead and put the car in reverse. Just push this all the way forward. Backup camera pops up. You can see all the guidelines to it, which is a great feature. Extremely HD graphics. And then putting the car into drive, which is all the way back now. The front view camera comes up. You can see the different guidelines change as I go. And then swiping down on the touchpad, we can go to different driving views. We can see the quarter views of each tire, the rear view, the full rear view with the top down. And then scrolling back up, we have a front view. Putting the car in park now, we just press the P button and we're now in park. To adjust all the climbing controls, just tapping this button down, the menu screen will come up on the screen. So just like you saw earlier, we can use all the climbing controls using the screen or using the actual physical buttons down here. And when I do tap a button down here, a little screen pops up here with all the different modes. We have more carbon fiber along the dash, which has a beautiful look to it. Four more air vents in the center, very easy to use these. You just point them in the correct direction. More carbon fiber makes its way to the center. Just opening this up, we have a little bit of storage in here and some cup holders and some USBs as well. Making our way to the center, now we get a lot of really cool displays here. These are all LCD color displays, which is really nice. As you can see, just tapping this down, we can change the different driving modes. Tapping this button, it goes between manual and drive. The sport mode, traction control, over on the right side, just pressing it, it'll go into the active exhaust and then the quiet exhaust. The button right here is for the active spoiler and something very cool, if I press it once, you'll actually watch the LCD screen change as the spoiler goes up into the higher position. And then you just hold the button down and the spoiler will go back down. Pressing the center button once, it opens up the center console. Decent amount of space in here, you can fit a few phones and wallets. And then it is nice how one of them opens, so you can still use this as an armrest while the passenger has access to the inside. And then to take a look at the glove box, opening this up, we have a lot of space in here as you would expect. Owner's manuals, all sorts of things can go in here. And then making our way to the top, this has an Alcantara headliner that has a great look to it. All of your sunroof controls are up here as well. Moving to the rear seat space, if we open up the door, you'll notice this is a pillarless door, giving it a sporty appearance. The rear door panel is finished off just like within the front, even all the way down here is covered in leather, which is a nice attention to detail. Moving on to the interior, this is a four-seater car. It has rear bucket seats with large bolstering in them, beautiful black leather with more black Alcantara, the same silver stitching, and then perforated leather all in the centers of it. We have climbing controls down here with air vents and your different temperatures. Now hopping inside to the AMG GT4 door, we'll go ahead and close the door. 
It is a pretty sporty feeling back here. These have bolsters in them. You're not used to having rear seats in a sedan that has bolsters. The armrest on the door panel is in a great spot. Very comfortable to be here. I have about maybe two or three inches of headroom here. There's no fold out or anything in the center, but you do get some storage space down here as well as two cup holders. A little bit of a sunscreen back there as well. Very sporty in the back here. It's not geared to be the biggest sedan for luxury. It's more of a sports car with four doors. But you can definitely be back here for a pretty good road trip. I have about five or six inches of knee room and then my feet are fitting nicely under the front seats. To take a look at the rear storage space, you can use the button on the interior, holding down the key fob button, or there is one on the back of the car. This is a hatchback design. We have a ton of space in here, as you can see. It goes down like a foot, so you have a lot of cargo area. You can see part of the Burma's rear audio system over here. Definitely a ton of space. And then the rear end does have a nice cover on it, finished off in more leather to hide any valuables you have in the rear. And then just pressing the button right up here, we can go ahead and close up the lift gate. So we are setting off now in the AMG GT63 four-door. This is pretty much like the two-door GT sports car, just a four-door version of it. It's got a lot more space to it. Same engine and transmission layout. It really is designed to be a full-on sports car with the rear seats and the storage space. But before we get this thing out on some nice twisty turns, once again, the interior on these Mercedes is absolutely beautiful. The perforated leather that you're holding on the steering wheel is amazing looking. We got the black leather up top with the center stripe, which gives it a nice subtle touch to it. Flat bottom design, all the silver accents to it. The carbon fiber that I'm seeing everywhere in the car is so nice to look at. The silver accents, everything you touch in this car is something very high quality. I extremely like how you have the dials on the steering wheel to control the different driving modes. We have the Comfort Sport and Sport Plus mode. We'll just stick with Comfort right now. Everything is in the most conservative setting to it. But already just getting up to speed now, you can tell this has sports car stuff in it. So with that said, we'll just go ahead and put it into Sport Plus mode. Already, it's so much more aggressive. We're gonna put it into manual by just tapping that button. Just upshift a little bit to quiet it down. But the steering is so heavy already. And actually, let me go back to comfort just to see the difference. But back into comfort now, it's a little bit lighter now. But oh my goodness, I'm already excited about this car. I drove the GT convertible last year and that was really cool to drive. But we also have the heads up display, which is a great touch. It's a really clear view to see. I have the tachometer on and my gear is in there as well, along with my speedometer and my speed limit. But then before we get to the nice twisty turns to experience what this car is like, this is a comfortable car just to drive in. It's very insulated from the road. There's no wind noise or road noise. You don't hear anything. The only thing that I can hear is the exhaust now that it's in the open position. And even just toggling that off now, there's no noise whatsoever in this thing, but we're gonna keep it on because we are in a fun sports car. The spoiler is in the up position too. All right, so we are on some twisties, doing a little bit of an acceleration. <laughs> oh my gosh, that exhaust. There's some nice, <laughs> nice sounds and some pops to that thing. All right, so getting up to some speed now, we'll do a little bit of an acceleration. That is such a meaty sound. <laughs> so taking some quick turns, this thing has no body roll whatsoever. <laughs> AMG makes an amazing sound in the It sounds so good. But it's surprising how this isn't the smallest car out there. It's not the AMG GT two-door sports car that we all love. It's a bigger version of it, and yet taking some sharp turns, you don't feel like you're in a car that can fit two people in the back and a lot of storage in the back as well. We got another good turn coming up. Downshifting twice. That is so planted. And then the steering is really tight as well. It's got a heavy weight to it. It's not super floaty at all. Again, it's a bigger car, that front end. There's a lot of car in front of you from where you're sitting as a driver, but it gives you a lot of feedback knowing where the car is. You can place it pretty well. The paddles have a great feel to them too. I like how solid they feel. Just clicking it a few times, going down through the gears. That exhaust is awesome. And even on a really tight turn, <laughs> you get a little bit of a pop on the exhaust every time you upshift too. Kind of kicks you in the back a little bit. That feels really cool. And then another sweeping turn just to fill it out. It's so planted, that's really surprising. So now we'll tone it down a little bit, scroll over into the comfort mode just to go back into the normal setting. Everything just toned down, there's no more noise to it. The engine and the exhaust are completely gone. We are in automatic mode now, just comfortably cruising on a back road now. 
that is something that I'm liking about this car. It seems to be two cars in one. It's got that sports car to it, but it still is a normal good daily driver. You could easily have this as a really good daily. The headrest is in a great spot, so you can actually sit back and kind of relax and enjoy your drive. You have a lot of the technology, like the lane keeping assist, the forward collision, the smart cruise control. You don't have to keep your hands on the steering wheel when you're on the highway and stuff like that. You just gotta touch it every now and then. But it's got all those safety features to be a comfortable driving car. And then the automatic transmission, just going in automatic mode, just kind of relaxing. You know, I'm getting up to speed with no issue. You know, you can drive this like a normal car. And then the fit and finish, like I said earlier, this thing is so beautiful. And then making a little bit of a U-turn, the shifter is down here. Steering is a little bit lighter now at the slow speeds. The backup camera and graphics are really good. And being an all-wheel drive car, you know, there's no wheel hop or anything weird like that. It's got a little bit bigger turning radius than some of the other cars, being a larger size car. But for being all-wheel drive and the size of it, that's pretty good. So then at a stop, the engine just shut off with the start-stop feature. We're gonna bump it back into Sport Plus. Engine started right back up. Sport Plus everything, and the exhaust is open, and we're gonna keep it into manual mode. Wow. Oh my goodness, that sounds so good. sharp turn <laughs> the brakes do a really good job wow those are super responsive and then just feeling it out a little bit more and the crazy thing is I'm not even flooring at all barely going above 4,000 rpm and it sounds that good but I can't imagine how this car would sound once it's broken in redlining it, actually driving it like that <laughs> oh this has a great sound and great driving characteristics to it on some quicker sweeper turns now, or sweeping turns. Man, Mercedes did a really good job. I wasn't expecting this to be too good for handling and stuff like that, just because it's not actually the same exact car as the AMG two-door. It's more of a different car with a lot of the same drivetrain stuff to it, but you would really be hard pressed to know that. And then one last acceleration. hear the turbo the blow valves going off that is super awesome so now oh I love that sound though unfortunately we're gonna tone it back down into comfort mode and that is about gonna sum up the test drive portion of the AMG GT four-door they also make an S model of it which has a little bit more power even a little bit more performance oriented than this one that we're in today but this thing has so much cool stuff to offer I really am impressed with the overall layout the design of it it's really cool looking I like how the rear end is sloping the front end is so mean looking the wheels uh, pretty much the whole package it's a pretty sporty looking car and then once again the interior this is just beautiful. We have ambient lighting in here. You probably can't see it in the daylight, but everything is lit up purple right now, which looks really cool. But that is about gonna wrap up the AMG GT 63 four-door Mercedes-Benz. This thing is a beast of a car. It can pretty much do anything you'd like to throw its way. Once again, huge thank you to Mercedes-Benz Northlake for providing this car for today's video. I'll have the link to their website down in the description below. They have a huge selection of Mercedes-Benz vehicles and a ton of these ones in stock ready to go, so definitely check them out. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a huge thumbs up, smash that subscribe button we will see you all next video but we're gonna keep it in sport plus wrapping up this video <laughs> we'll see you next video guys